My name is Keith William Seckel, and I exited the Navy as an as HT3. Okay, I was a um, I was an E3 um, coming out of boot. Um, I was the first ass assigned to the working on the engines, didn't even I guess. Um, and I started actually just as started to learn how we call it, to run the rack on a diesel engine, how to tune it, I guess. Um, and a friend of mine that I was living with, or going to live with, he was um, in the shipfitter shop. So I ended up transferring over to the shipfitter shop, and that's and that's I, I remember working in the shipfitter shop. We did you know welding, fabricating, you know just whatever for the boats. Um, the boats were fun. I mean, we had a lot of good times. Um, we, we had a boats that made friend who was allowed to check out a, a boat, a PBR, <coughs> for the weekend, or for the, for the day, and it was an hour drive from Vallejo to San Francisco Bay. And the PBRs were amazing boats. I mean, they would get what they called, get them up on step, where they would, because they had no, no propellers, they had inboard um, uh, thrusters. <coughs> And they had the two diesel engines, and they would get them up on step, which I mean, I think they could ride in six or eight inches of water. And you would, the boats would make it, they had two controls, for one for each engine, and they would, one which would go reverse, one would go um, forward, and the boat could actually turn in its own length. And so um, we'd, we'd go to San Francisco Bay, and we'd amuse the tourists by doing that. We'd tie up along Pier 39. And we would get off and we would go get a loaf of bread, big thing of cheese, bottle of wine. And that was, that was a, a, a day in San Francisco, which was fun, you know. That was back in 70, 71, I guess, <clears throat> late 71. But uh, that was fun. But I got to do a cool, another really cool story is, um, if you remember, the Indians were on Alcatraz. They kicked the Indians off. They finally got them to get off. And so they didn't want them to reoccupy the island. So the U.S. Marshals were living there, and they kind of, they were, the Marshals were living on the island. The Coast Guard patrolled the island during the day. NIOTS, the command I was at, patrolled at night. So they, they would have two, um, they weren't swift boats, they were the big, they were big, the big patrol boats where guys would actually sleep on the boat. Probably eight or nine people, anyway. Um, so we were going to patrol at night. <clears throat> so on our way there, our radar went out on our boat. And so that's one place you don't want to go around Alcatraz without radar. And so the command, whoever was commanding us, they decided one boat would do the whole island, and then midnight or whatever it was, we'd switch crews. And so, so I remember landing on Alcatraz, and I can still remember the day. I don't remember the exact day, but the U.S. Marshals were making dinner, and I was watching, they had a little TV, and they're watching the Pro Bowl of 1972. And so that's how I remember the date, relatively, that the marshals were watching the Pro Bowl while I was, he was making dinner. So myself and two buddies, we had to run on the island. So we literally explored the island on our own. And then we eventually caught up with um, one of the marshals in our, I think it might have been a first class, that was with us, and a couple other guys, and then he gave us a tour. So somewhere at home, I've got a, a a souvenir I've got from it was a it was a I got like a directory, like a little call for like call the warden this number, call for, you know for this stuff. So I got a little directory at home someplace that I souvenir that I found, and I can still remember walking on the catwalk around like you know like if you remember the movie Clint Eastwood was in you know looking down at that that where they guys recreation area. And we got to walk around that island. So I've been on Alcatraz with my wife since then. But of course, um, there's a lot of places they don't let you go for safety purposes. But we got to explore a lot of those places back in the day. So that was pretty cool. And so um, our, our radar eventually came back and worked. So we ended up both patrolling. So we just got lucky. We just happened to go on the island. And I can't imagine. I mean, um, to live in those for the most part, cages, I, did, I, I would go crazy. I mean, I can't imagine living in some of those cells like those guys had to. Um, and, and they said you could, you know, hear, San, or, or at night, you could like, hear the life, nightlife of San Francisco going on. And I, that would probably drive you crazy. Um, 
cold. I've never been so cold in my life in San Francisco. Um, I remember staying in Midwatch from 12 to 4 in the morning, and our job was basically to kind of watch all the boats, and because I don't know how many we had. We had a dozen or so PBRs, we had some Zippos, we had some other, other boats that we were responsible for, and basically our job was to make sure they didn't sink because they, they would draw, draw water, they would leak. And so I can remember getting down on a PBR in between two diesels, starting that motor up, or both motors up, getting down between those two motors just to warm up because it was so cold. Uh, it, the dampness of the cold was, yeah. wow. Um, but yeah, I can remember starting those engines up to pump the boat out and getting in between those engines to, just to get warm because it was, it was cold.